All right, good morning, everyone. Um, so my topic today will be Maps for All, Designing for Accessibility. Um, I've been a cartographer for 24 years, and um, my, my primary job duties are to do wayfinding for the millions of visitors to our parks and trails system throughout the state of Minnesota and beyond. Um, so one of our big tasks was figuring out what does an accessible map mean? Um, so the dictionary defines it as accessible as being capable of being used or seen or easily used or accessed by people with disabilities. Well, let's just put it out there right now. Nothing can be 100% accessible to all people right out of the box. You may have to consider alternative formats in whatever you're creating. Um, but uh, visual um, impairments that we can address in our design are um, color vision deficiency, otherwise known as color blindness, or low vision. Um, we can do these things to the best of our abilities with the knowledge that we have, with the tools we have available. So we can do our best to try to make things as accessible as possible to more users. So color blindness, um, more accurately, poor deficient color, division, or color vision is an inability to see a difference between certain colors. Though many people are commonly using the term color blind, you hear that more often. Um, true color blindness is not, um, it's, it's extremely rare, and that's where people would see things in black and white. But most people, uh, about 99, 98% of people with a color vision deficiency are red, green color vision deficient, and um, would see things in more of a, a mustard yellow color. So what does that mean? I mean, it's a huge number of people, 8% of men and 0.5% of women worldwide suffer from some form of color vision deficiency. That's approximately 300 million people. And just to give you an idea of how many that is, the population of the United States is 332 million people. So that's almost the population of the United States. It's massive. So just to give you an idea how color vision deficiency is seen, um, normal vision, you see kind of a rainbow of six different colors here. But then protonopia and deuteranopia are forms of red-green color vision deficiency. And tritonopia is a form of blue-yellow color vision deficiency. These are things that we can all address in the colors that we are choosing within our maps. And low vision, the other um, impairment that we talked about, is a visual impairment that's not correctable through surgery, pharmaceuticals, glasses, or contact lenses. So what does that mean? This um, 2070 example is what a person would, with low vision may see. There's a lot of other pieces within that low vision category, um, but this is kind of the piece that we can address in, in design. So not everything is within our control, obviously. Um, perception is inherently in, unique to each individual person. Um, and there was a study done by MIT that shows this. So what colors do you guys see? Well, according to a study by MIT, 1,400 people saw this dress with these percentages of colors. Um, they found that there are several factors that affect perception, like age, gender, assumptions of daylight and blue light, and illumination. So com some considerations for making a map more visually accessible. You're telling a story with your map. And the first thing you should ask yourself is why a map? Should it even be a map? What is the purpose of the map? There's a lot of these good questions um, that you should be asking yourself before we even decide to make a map. Um, your map should tell a story. And to tell a good story, don't get lost in the weeds. Too much information on a map can confuse your reader, um, especially with those with cognitive disabilities and um, too many unnecessary elements can be difficult for some people to understand. So if it doesn't give added value to the map, just get rid of it. Um, best practices, color accessibility. Color is very tricky. Um, so here are some tips to think about. Choose your color based on information hierarchy. Your important information should be the boldest of your colors. Your base map or, Im or imagery information should be muted back through transparency or the use of um, different colors. And try not to use color alone to communicate uh, your point, your, your important information. And ask yourself, is this being printed? It's much easier to go from CMYK values, the transition from CMYK to RGB is far more accurate than it is from RGB to CMYK. 
A little bit more on background imagery. Um, usually imagery is a supporting element, so make sure that it's not the star of the show. Um, a lot of times people will use a full, opaque, transparent or uh, opaque background for whatever they're doing, and it starts to interfere with your map objects. Um, this map is extremely difficult for someone with protonopia, as you can see with the filter applied, because the red is actually going back into the green elements in the background. And so make sure that you're, trans or that you're using transparency or muted colors when you're using a background that is very strong. Um, scaling. Uh, make sure that your scale allows for enough white space in between each object and use leader lines around crowded areas. Patterns and lines. Uh, there are several items to consider when using patterns and lines. Um, try not to use more than two patterns. and They can be very distracting and very hard for low vision users to discern, especially when you have map objects on top of them. Um, but if you're going to use them, add transparency to reduce the emphasis of the pattern and so the map um, objects can be more popped out. And try not to use dashed or dotted lines on top of patterns. This is extremely difficult for low vision users to see. Uh, symbols. When symbolizing quantities on a map, the symbol size should double in size for each increment scale to be more easily discernible. Um, some additional considerations for low vision users. Uh, do not use underlined text. Uh, most of us kind of already know most of this stuff, but it can be used for a hyperlink, but it's also very hard to our low vision um, users to see that with that line underneath because it blurs everything together. Do not overlap labels and keep white space around your objects and remove unnecessary multiple labels. Like if you have a bunch of road symbols on a map, get rid of some of them so there's less for your user to interpret. And then do not place labels upside down or squished to make sure that kerning between your letters is um, kept, uh, maintained so that it's not blending in together. And do not use shadow text. Um, halos are actually a good alternative to shadow text because it pops out your imagery, but it also surrounds the text completely um, so it doesn't blur any of the elements. Um, so some of my favorite resources. Uh, the state of Minnesota was told several years ago to make everything accessible um, since none of us really knew what that meant. Um, we've done a ton of research. We've got a huge group together um, with everybody representing different agencies within the state. And we've got a bunch of great resources on our Office of Accessibility website. Um, there's a million things I could talk about for map design for accessibility, but it can only cover a small percentage in 10 minutes. So um, uh, the map design guide and quick tips card are, are available on this accessibility website. But we also have information about static maps, uh, making your PDFs more accessible, as well as interactive mapping tools and resources. Uh, we have some sample accessible color schemes, which are part of that map design guide as well as downloadable color scheme palettes available for both ESRI and Adobe products. Uh, some of you may not know that Windows and Mac already have some built-in color filters. Um, I may be preaching to the choir, I may not be, but I just found out about this last week. So um, These can be found in Windows um, in the settings tabs and in Mac, you can find them in the Apple menu system preferences. So it can simulate the screen to make it look like there's, like if you have protonopia, this is something that um, would show you what a person with protonopia would be seeing on your entire screen so you can compare colors. Uh, my personal favorite is called Color Oracle. Um, it's just a little thing that I pop up. I see a lot of head shaking, which is awesome. Um, Color Oracle is just a quick and dirty way to put up a filter so you can test all your colors kind of on the fly. Um, if you use Adobe Illustrator, there are some things where it just stays on either protonopia or deuteronopia, but they don't have tridonopia yet. So um, Color Oracle has all three of the different deficiencies in their package. And finally, um, Color Contrast Analyzer, um, especially helpful for those doing interactive mapping. You can test to see if a text color on a colored background has enough uh, ratio balance to be able to make sure that it's uh, got, got enough contrast, basically. Um, so all of these tools are available. There's a million other tools that you could be using, but these are just some of the favorites that we've been using over the years. So that's it for me. Thank you.